Well, survival horror. A genre fraught with so many pitfalls, it can be really hard to find a good one. But in simple terms, most survival horror games aren't very good. Filled with bad controls, awful stories and voice acting, and camera angles that are more deadly than any of the actual enemies. It's a hard genre to get right, and today I'm reviewing a game that has all of these pitfalls. I have a lot of problems with the original Fatal Frame, but I thought it did a lot of interesting things as well. It's a very interesting game to talk about, hence this video. So I hope fans of this series don't immediately hit the dislike button and bail. It's just my opinion. You're more than welcome to tell me how wrong I am in the comments section. Anyway, Halloween draws near, so turn off those lights and get comfy, because we're about to delve into a pretty spooky game. <laughs> Something happened to my brother. Fatal Frame, also known as Project Zero in Europe, was a different kind of horror game when it was released in the early 2000s. Most Japanese horror games at the time tended to be more Western inspired, at least as far as visuals were concerned. Resident Evil borrowed a lot from the movies of George A. Romero and Aliens, and Silent Hill took inspiration from the writings of Stephen King, among numerous others. Fatal Frame was different because it was traditional J-horror, in the same vein as Ringu in Juwan. Its setting and story is heavily inspired by Japanese urban legends and possibly even a real story, as the US version claims, but we'll get into that a little later. The game begins with the disappearance of a novelist at the haunted Himura Mansion. We briefly play as this guy in the prologue before he also goes missing, but not before giving us some extremely memorable voice acting. I captured a ghost with this camera. This camera has the power to expose things the normal eye can't see. I remember the incident from which I learned of its unique power to capture ghosts. That is the clunkiest exposition I think I've ever seen. We can only assume he talks to himself like this all the time. I rendered a video with this Mac. This vacuum has the power to expose dirt the normal eye can't see. I remember the incident from which I learned of its unique power of printing anime girls. So now we play as his sister, Miku, the game's actual protagonist, who also enters the Haunted Mansion. Okay, I have the same problems with this plot as I did the grudge. Stop going into the Haunted Mansion. Nothing good can come of it. Inside the mansion, Miku finds the Camera Obscura, a special kind of camera that can exercise ghosts. You can indeed capture ghosts. With this camera. That is not a ghost, that is a ghoul. I'm pretty sure they're not ghouls. Ghoul! Okay, ghouls. Needless to say, it's your only defense against the restless Samaras and Sadakos wandering the hallways of this once great abode. Ugh. I'm gonna level with you. These long, black haired girls give me the creeps. Your old buddy Sniggity here was almost killed by one once. No joke. It's too much crap in this game for me to recommend it on any level whatsoever. I mean, and maybe he's a rental. I mean, I'm just a guy who reviews video games on the internet. I can't be dealing with ghouls. Which brings us back to Fatal Frame. A common characteristic of survival horror is being isolated in a hostile environment with few supplies. It's not a power fantasy where you have tons of guns and ammunition. You're not the hunter, you're the hunted. And your objective isn't to win, it's to survive. Fatal Frame is very much the same thing. You're gonna have to be frugal with your health items and film stock. And you may need to run away from some enemy encounters. Towards the beginning, I was on top of the situation. The ghouls were easy to kill and I was handling myself fine. And then shit got real. The ghouls got tougher, healing items became rarer, and I was no longer feeling so confident. Each enemy encounter was extremely dangerous, and there was never a moment where I felt safe. The entire game takes place in a relatively small mansion, so you will be doing a lot of backtracking through the same areas. Especially when you don't know what you're doing, which I never do in these types of games. I consulted the walkthrough, I'm not gonna lie. Try figuring out what any of these convoluted symbols mean without one. And this isn't the Resident Evil mansion. There's no giant underground lab or sewer area. It's kept pretty realistic with most of the hidden areas being these secret hallways between rooms. Unfortunately, unlike Resident Evil, the design of the mansion isn't intuitive at all. I want you to think about the Spencer Estate from the first Resident Evil for a second. If you've played that game, chances are you remember where everything is. At the very least, you probably have a good idea. You have the front entrance where everything connects, the dining room on the left, the hallway with the first zombie just beyond that, and so on. It's easy to remember because all the areas in that game were very well designed. Every room had a different look and feel. 
this isn't true in Fatal Frame. I'm sure there are fans of this game that know every nook and cranny, but I found it to be very confusing. And I don't even think this is down to the design of the mansion, it's how the game presents it. It's pitch black most of the time. You have a tiny torch that lights up part of the room, but you'll have no idea what you're looking at most of the time. This, in addition to how the camera will whip around depending on where you are, makes this an unpleasant experience. I had to make sure several times it wasn't my TV that was causing the problem. It wasn't, this game is just too dark. Darkness is obviously necessary for that horror mood to some extent, but this game takes it way too far. The Silent Hill games were pretty dark too, but I could still tell what I was doing. What is this? What am I looking at here? You can see me losing my bearings here because of how dark this place is. I had to check my map every two seconds just to make sure I hadn't gotten lost. As if just getting around in this game wasn't hard enough, you also have to fight enemies. I really did like the gameplay. You point the camera at ghouls and you wait for it to charge up so you can do extra damage. You can nervously flash shots off like a madman or you can play it calmly and wait for the right moment to strike. This is really good risk versus reward gameplay and it can really add to the horror at times. If you wait until a ghoul is attacking you can do a zero shot which deals the highest damage and stopping power. It's really nerve wracking when you're waiting for it but so good when you manage to pull it off. I really liked this gameplay at first, but as the game progressed, the difficulty spiked. Ghouls got stronger, faster and a hell of a lot more frustrating to fight. You won't be able to see them most of the time because it's too dark, they can turn invisible, teleport behind you and rush at you before you have a chance to react. But I haven't even started talking about the controls, which are your worst enemy. Miku feels like she's wading through knee-high mud. Is this really the run of somebody running from a ghoul? I hated the run feature. You hold down square and she will automatically run forward. You don't need to adjust her direction unless you need to, but try telling that to my muscle memory. I was always holding the analog stick which always made her switch direction whenever the camera angle changed. Remember the good old days of survival horror where forward made you run forward? Those, those were simpler times. Don't even get me started on how often Miku will run into things and get stuck. Annoying on its own, the bane of my existence when fighting a ghoul. Let's take this part of the game for example. I'm fighting this ghost and I'm fighting this ghoul on an extremely narrow pathway and Miku is getting stuck on nothing. Come on Miku! There are so many of these types of moments where I was yelling at my TV. I just didn't enjoy the gameplay. Enemy encounters are meant to be unpleasant in a horror game, sure, but this game takes it way too far in this direction. After a while, the scariness of a ghoul encounter was replaced with frustration. And frustration isn't fun, you know? It's tedious and it made me want to stop playing. Which I didn't. I didn't actually manage to beat this game, to my relief. <laughs> this game is just a total bastard. I mentioned before that you can run away from enemies. Don't. This game will punish you hard if you go with your gut instinct and very slowly run away. That ghoul hasn't disappeared. He's just waiting for the perfect moment to screw you over. After I managed to beat a tough boss and solve a puzzle, I understandably went to save my progress. And you know what happened? Boom! A ghoul ganked me at the save point, that's what happened. This is like if you went in the save room in Resident Evil and there was a goddamn hunter waiting for you in there. Part of me does want to compliment it for being so unforgiving. Anyway, moral of the story is, always kill the ghouls so they can't come back and wreck your game. Yeah, I'm sure this is subjective, but I just didn't enjoy the gameplay at all. Fighting ghouls in zero visibility with no room to manoeuvre. It just feels bad, which is a shame. I really did go into this game wanting to love it. But let's talk about what I did enjoy about the game, which was the story. The cutscenes are really good on average. At least when they don't have voice acting. I captured a ghoul with this smartphone. The voice acting in this game is weirdly emotionless, to a point where I can't actually tell if it was done on purpose to go with the whole dead atmosphere. But once you get to Miku, the voice acting is pretty far and in between. The story is mostly told through these writings, which slowly explain how the mansion became so haunted. They describe bizarre rituals and the sacrifice of a young girl to keep the gates of hell closed. The mansion itself is filled with Shinto lore and other tangentially related rituals. Darkness aside, I really love the griminess of the visuals, particularly these weird cutscenes that resemble beaten up old film. I also just love these ghost designs. I mean, ghoul designs. Look at these things, they're horrifying. Which is how enemies in horror games should be. Wink wink, subtle jab at the cardboard cutter enemies from Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. Not only this, they all have their own stories if you do a little digging, and they don't really repeat themselves. You'll encounter the same type of ghoul a couple times, sure, but usually each encounter is unique. 
It makes it quite an unpredictable game, which reminds me, this game loves messing with you. What strikes me about these moments is that they aren't accompanied by any sounds, it's just silence. These random creepy events aside, the sound design is pretty active and really good for the most part. However, there were times when it got a little too excited for my taste. And other times when it was just the right amount of creepy. There are a lot of different types of ghouls in this mansion, and they're not all hostile. Some of them are just restless souls stuck in purgatory. You're encouraged to take pictures of these as you see them, which I didn't like that much. My first reaction when I see a ghoul shouldn't be the same as when I see a rare Pokemon. My first reaction should be to shit my pants, followed by banishing it with my magic camera. You get spirit points when you photograph any kind of ghoul, which can be used to upgrade the camera obscura. You can upgrade the charge speed and the range of the camera and unlock new abilities. You might even be tempted to grind on ghouls just to acquire these points, which again is a really strange feature in a horror game. As I mentioned earlier, the US version boasts that it's based on a real Himuro mansion where something similar happened. However, this based on a true storyline doesn't appear in the Japanese version, nor could I find any evidence of the real incident, so this is most likely a marketing ploy. It is based on real Japanese urban legends and ghost stories though, which makes it as much of a true story as Shin Megami Tensei I guess. I said towards the beginning that Fatal Frame is a very interesting game, and I meant it. I have a lot of problems with its execution, but I'm glad that it exists. It has all of the things I love about the horror genre, namely the feeling of isolation and dread. The atmosphere is sure to give you the willies. If you love a good Japanese ghost story, this might be worth checking out. It's just too bad that parts of it weren't designed better. This game made me hate that I hated it. Let me know in the comments if the sequels are any better, because I would love to come back in the next video and say, this series is awesome. When I say sequels, I mean 2 and 3. I already played Maiden of Blackwater. It was terrible. D don't buy it. Do not buy this. Anyway, have a happy Halloween. I'll see you next time with something less spooky. Maybe. Hello everyone, Sneakity here, doing the end card. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Next week it's going to be pretty cool, we're going to be reviewing the live action Another movie, which, which I'm very excited about. I've actually already recorded it, so it's just a matter of editing the thing. But yeah, if you if you subscribe to this channel for my Another videos, you'll be very happy about this. I will also be doing, for my next game review, the Cowboy Bebop games, so look forward to that, that is going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, um, watch some of the videos that I've got playing on screen here. And uh, if you hey, if you want to do this end card here, maybe you can like promote yourself and stuff. Just let me know in the comments, and you can record 30 uh, like to a minute of audio of just you rambling, promoting your own channel. What whatever, it, it's all fun. Anyway, I, I don't want to ramble too long, so I'll see you later. I captured a dog with this turkey. This turkey has the power to capture dogs.